Okay, guys, let's get started with the 21 Detox Challenge booklet. Um, I just want to start off by saying that you sh this is only for educational purposes and doesn't replace medical advice. I want to talk to you about today about why we should detox, what we're going to include and what we're going to exclude in our diet. I'm going to give you five tips how to be successful straight away and what to do at the end of the detox. Um, just want to start off as well by saying that you just try and keep an open mind. You're going to hear a lot of things that are contradicting to what you've heard before. Um, but from my opinion, I think Australia has a lot of diseases and a lot of weight gain issues that I think something's wrong and don't think things are working. There's a lot of diets and detoxes out there and um, nothing seems to be working for us. So I uh, just keep an open mind for this. So why should we detox? We want to try and eliminate what is causing toxicity and inflammation in the body so it can detoxify on its own. Um, the liver is the main detoxifying organ in the body. When that's bogged down with um, oxidative stress and just bad food, it, just, it can't take in the proper nutrients itself and detoxify on its own. So we're trying to give the liver a break here, and um, you'll hear me talk about other things like personal care products and toothpaste and all, all that sort of stuff where if you really want to go all out and give the liver a break, read all those paragraphs. It's very important. Um, usually when I detox, I do go all out in terms of the, um, the toothpaste and deodorants and stuff. We go organic and, and watch what we've used in the cleaning products. So um, it's very important that... You try and take as much as you can out of this program, learn a lot, and hopefully, um, hopefully you enjoy what you learn here today. Um, so I'm just going to scroll through the first couple of pages. There's a lot here I want you to read on your own. Um, and I just want to go through some main points that's going to help you get you started straight away and hopefully eliminate any confusion that everyone has. Um, here's why you should detox and toxicity. So toxicity is, comes from the toxic load in our body through stress and our environment. A diet high in sugar, trans fats, additives, preservatives, pesticides, hormones, and antibiotics is very toxic to our bodies and our minds. Um, mercury, lead, and other heavy metals also contribute to our toxic load. Negative thoughts, behaviors, and beliefs that increase our stress level are toxic to our minds, bodies, and overall health and well-being. Um, so this is, if you read down here, it says a standard Australian diet puts a tremendous burden on our body's ability to detoxify naturally, what I was talking about before. So um, read through toxicity. It's quite an important one. Um, the most important, I think, is inflammation. So I'm going to go through and talk about the inflammation. There's a little um, paragraph there on your liver here, too. Uh, inflammation. So inflammation comes from the sugar we eat, high doses of wrong kinds of oils and fats in our diet, hidden food allergies, lack of exercise, chronic stress, hidden infections in our fat cells. I want to spend a bit of time on these omega-6 and 9 versus omega-3 fatty acids because um, that's a big thing which is causing a lot of people a lot of inflammation in Australia. And it's a lot of ways why it's bogging down the liver and making it very hard to lose weight. Um, because omega-6s and 9s, they say it's, there's some healthy fats, but they're actually found in things like chips and biscuits um, and refined seed oils that you see in restaurants. And the omega-3s are the ones that we want to try and balance out and get level. So the ratio should be between 6 and 9s and 3s should be a 1 to 1 ratio. The standard Australian diet, they say, is a ratio of 20 to 1. So it's very bad because we, lot, we eat a lot in restaurants. And restaurants are using all these refined seed oils down here that we are excluding from our diet throughout this challenge. So all these oils down here, you'll see grape seed oil, which everyone thought was healthy, vegetable oil, sapphire, sunflower oil. They're all refined seed oils. They're very high oxidative. So we want to make sure that we eliminate them from our diet. Um, I'm going to try and encourage you to eat in as much as possible because, again, restaurants do use all these seed oils because they're cheap and they can be reused over and over again. So keep that in mind. Okay, um, let's move through food sensitivities. You can read that on your own. Um, psychological response, again, what you should be getting from your food. Promote a healthy hormonal response. So you'll hear me talk about the hormones a lot through here. Um, insulin and leptin are the main ones. Leptin's the hormone that makes you think you're full. Um, and insulin is the, main, is the main fat store hormone in our body. So insulin rises, of course, when we have a high carbohydrate food. Well, actually, rises when we have any sort of foods. But it's we're trying to, throughout this program, keep a steady state of insulin. So when we have a nice balanced food um, with proteins, fats, and oils, and all sort of stuff that we're looking for, um, the insulin gradually rises. So what we're trying to promote is spacing out our meals, so four to five hours apart, which I'm going to go through in a second, um, so the insulin can come up, and then they're going to drop right down. It's going to teach our body to use fat as a fuel, um, which you just is that if insulin levels are high, and your body will not use fat for a fuel source, and a hard time stabilizing blood sugar. So you can have a read through there on promoting a healthy hormonal response. Um, supporting healthy guts, which we'll talk about in our diet when we get to our level one diet. Autoimmune disorders. So auto, autoimmune diseases affect 24 million people and include, but are not limited to, rheumatoid arthritis, lupus, multiple sclerosis, thyroid disease, bowel disease, Crohn's disease, diabetes, and colitis. Um, if you know anyone that has an autoimmune disorder, refer them to this program because it is very good for them. They're probably already seeing a naturopath and somewhat doing this diet anyway, but this can really clean it up and, and help people a lot. So um, put them onto this program. Uh, let's move through. 
next um, keep going the program how to decide your level what I would suggest um, if you've done a detox before go to level 2 level 3 is going to be a bit challenging unless you have an autoimmune condition and you really want to try and fix it up level 3 is the way to go if you've never done a detox before and you think you relatively eat badly I would suggest level 1 if you want to jump to level 2 you're going to get better weight loss results but level 2 I'm telling you will be too emotionally physically and mentally draining for you to handle straight away well, I suggest you start off with level 1, you can easily change it 4, 5, 6, 7 days in if you're feeling it's easy and just move on to level 2. I'm going to go through the differences in a second. Anyway. Uh, here's more about your autoimmune conditions as well if you want to go to level 3. Um, there's other symptoms that you might not even know if you have an autoimmune disease. You can read through those, so diabetes, eczema, gastritis, um, lynchian sclerosis. There's all these different things here which could also mean you're, you've got an autoimmune disorder, so read through those. Difference between the levels you can read on your own. I'm going to take you through each individual level anyway, so um, you can have a quick read through that there. Um, yeah, we're talking about eating whole, real, unprocessed foods, which you'll hear me talk about when we get to the grocery section. Um, level one, here we go. So I'll take you through the whole level one and what to eat. Vegetables, six to eight servings a day. They are non-starchy vegetables. So um, I've got the only starchy vegetable level one can have is the sweet potatoes. I will just encourage that to be just um, post-workout as well. Um, if you're very, and that's only if you're very active. Or if you want to definitely increase a lot more weight loss, scrap the starchy vegetables altogether. Um, if you do have a starchy vegetable that's not included in the six to eight servings a day, you're looking for a six to eight on top of that starchy vegetable. Uh, fruits, one to three servings a day. The serving size, um, for example, a banana is two servings. Um, so think of a female's fist, that is one serving. So a banana is probably two fists for a female. So that's two servings. Just think about that. You're looking at things like half a punnet of blueberries would be um, would be a serving. So just keep that in mind because we're trying to limit the fruit because it's high in sugar, but we're also trying to get the fiber and nutrients out of those fruits. Um, I might talk about this now. So we'll, I'm trying to promote healthy eating here, but also a good way to go would be organic if you can because we're trying to eliminate all the pesticides and herbicides which are bogging down the liver anyway. Um, and I know eating organic can be really expensive. So a couple of things you can Google. You can Google something called the Dirty Dozen. And that is 12 of the most sprayed pesticide and herbicide fruits. And I think there's vegetables on there as well. And it tells you what to stay away from. So um, I think things like spinach, blueberries, strawberries are on that list. So those are things that are um, most sprayed with per, uh, pesticides and herbicides. You probably want to try and go, go organic with those um, because they're the worst. Then you can also Google something called the Clean 15. Now that's 15 foods that are the least sprayed with pesticides and herbicides, so that you could probably go conventional. Um, so definitely Google those, especially when you get to your grocery list on what you're going to buy and what you're going to buy organic, um, because a lot of the uh, pesticides and herbicides and all the toxins and what's causing inflammation is actually stored in the fats of the meats, and it's also the pesticides and herbicides, again, are just bogging down the liver. So if you can go organic, definitely do that. Fat at each meal. We're trying to eat fat at every single meal here. Um, you've got all your oils here that I want you to have. You see the refined seed oils are not there. Um, just want to save olive oil. Olive oil does oxidize at a high temperature. We don't want any more oxidative stress in the body. So if you're going to use olive oil, sprinkle that on your food when you're done, if you like it, on your salads and stuff. Don't cook with it. Um, things we'll be cooking with will be like your, your coconut oil or ghee or stuff like that. Uh, quality protein. We're going to eat at every meal. Uh, here's your list of your, your proteins here. So. For females, you're looking for a fistful is your protein source at every single meal. Um, so that does not mean one egg. That means three eggs, ladies. So you're trying to have three eggs as a protein source. There's a lot of recipes in here that have eggs, and there'll be no one eggs. There'll be lots of threes and sixes that you're cooking with. Uh, males are looking for two fist sizes. That's how much protein you should be having in yours at each meal. Um, beverages, water. At least two to four liters of water is going to be important for this detox program, which a lot of people know. Um, you've got some seasonings here which you can go through which a lot of people are going to try and look at. Um, just be aware of all the sugar contents in these seasonings when you, you go have, them, have a look at all the what we're trying to do here, um, what you cannot eat, have a look at make sure none of that stuff, what you cannot eat is in your seasonings um, and your sauces. Um, let's go up here back on to what not to eat. Grains, we're going to eliminate all grains, we're going to eliminate all sugar, we're going to eliminate all alcohol, most of the legumes, there's only a couple of legumes which are in the vegetable section. Um, soy, soy mimics estrogen, so again we're trying to balance out the hormone levels, so we don't want anything interrupting those, so no soy, um, and no dairy. 
Um, a lot of people are, have a lot of issues with dairy anyway, so we're going to eliminate that. Um, it's going to give the liver a nice break as well. So beverages, no caffeine, which is including coffee. You can have herbal teas, um, green tea and black tea is okay. Um, but just check the contents of those. A lot of them you find might say they've got pesticides, additives and preservatives and stuff in there. Uh, and there's, sometimes there's actually a tea bag that's actually filled with all the toxins. So just check the ingredients and of course organic teas are going to be the best way to go. No proteins, um, no protein powders and no white potatoes. Um, on that one. Uh, what to have sometimes? Kombucha. Kombucha is a fermented tea you can get at the grocery store, not grocery store, you're probably looking at to go to a health food store. Um, it's very good, it's a fermented tea that's going to balance out the bacteria in your stomach and that's the what to have sometimes. A lot of them that I've found in Sydney are high in sugar as well, so that's why you're looking for something with two grams of sugar. I haven't found one yet, so what I do is I just have half a can, half a bottle. So just keep that in mind, that's also not to have every day, that's one every two days or so, what to have sometimes. Uh, level 2, the difference between level 1 and level 2 is the fruit serving, so um, the only fruit we're having in level 2 is lemon and lime, okay, um, with the exception of the sometimes fruits. The sometimes fruits over here, which is only one green apple, one green tipped banana a day. I'm trying to eliminate the sweetness and the sugar out of this program, um, so you'll, you'll find when, once we do that, we take all the sugary stuff out, we're going to start to taste the, um, the sweetness and things like carrots and broccoli and all our vegetables, so we're going to try and get the sugar cravings out of the body. Um, and the other difference was the um, white potatoes and sweet potatoes. So this is actually in what not to eat. And we saw in level one that you could have the sweet potatoes. And I'm only encouraging here sweet potatoes are only if you're very active. Again, it should be consumed post-workout. Um, and that's the only difference those two. Um, again, no coffee, no protein powders. Protein powders are whey based, so they're, um, they come from dairy, so we're trying to eliminate all protein powders. I've been asked, if, should we use vegetable protein powders, but um, you're, just, you're defeating the whole purpose of what I'm trying to do here. I'm trying to teach you how to eat whole foods um, and to rely on those nutrients, and you'll find with protein powders, it does, it's does. it got the nutrient value, but you just have the energy crash for the high insulin spike straight away. So again, just trying to eat whole foods throughout as much as you can. Level three, the difference between those ones is we're reintroducing the fruit again because we're trying to get the fiber and the nutrients back into these people who have autoimmune diseases. So that's important to increase those servings to one or three a day. Um, but they're a lot more limited though because they've got a lot, a lot of what not to eat fruits. Um, dried, dehydrated, canned fruits and stuff like that. No, nothing such as watermelon, mango, pineapple and grapes. Another thing they're doing is no nightshade vegetables and that is white potatoes, all tomatoes, Red and green capsicum, chili, eggplants, all that sort of stuff. Make sure you read through those if you're going to do level three. It's a lot more strict this level three. Same with the program, um, protein, and then not having eggs and on this one. So that's another difference there. There's your nuts and seeds they can't have. There's a lot more nuts and seeds they can't have. Um, and here we're looking at our herbal teas as well. So a lot more herbal teas you can have here, and we're going to prioritize and try to balance out the body for someone with a autoimmune disease. Same thing, no coffee. We're actually including no and green and black coffee. Uh, sorry, tea here. So nothing at all for level three. Here's some uh, meal ideas that are put together. I'm also sending you some recipes that for spring and summertime, so you'll get more in your emails. Um, let's keep going through. There's your snacks. Hopefully we don't have to snack. Um, hopefully our meals are dense enough for the proteins, fats, and vegetables that we don't need to snack. That'd be ideal. Um, but just look at those snack vegetables. This is your um, grocery list, level one, two, and three. So take that to the grocery store with you if you like. It's much easier to just go through and get these, have them, have them with you. Um, here's our meal timing here. So I want to go through some things that's not written on here is um, some 12-hour fasting, which I want to talk about. So you've got your tips on here on pre-workout and post-workout you can read, but what I want you to try and do is I want to try and have a 12-hour gap between dinner and breakfast the next morning. That's important when I was talking about the hormones, getting the insulin to drop right down and, and give the liver a break and balance out the hormones and, and just give the, um, the liver a, a good time to just work out what's going on and it's slightly detoxify on its own. Um, that's the main thing there. You can read through your post-workout, pre-workout stuff and that's again going to be the starchy vegetables, the sweet potatoes, the salmon, butternut pumpkin if you want to um, in your post-workout. Again, you want to get really good fat loss results, don't have any starchy vegetables at all. Um, there's your meal timing more again, how much to eat, so just be careful with the, uh, the palm size stuff that I talked about before, that's very important. The portion control is going to be very important, as is any diet. Um, here's about your healthy fats, fat is your friend. You might find that this diet looks very high in fats, but um, they say that high fat is going to cause high cholesterol. It's, it's not that, believe me, I think that a lot of um, 
a lot of doctors have told us every since the doctors told us stop having fat because we're going to get high cholesterol. Um, more people have had cholesterol problems because now they started to introduce a lot more sugar and stuff in their foods to make them tasty because they're taking the fat out and it's in turn causing more problems. Um, fruits, one or two servings a day. That's it. We know we talked about that. It's a very minimal fruit exercise, which we we know we're doing. Journaling might journaling might be a good idea to find out how you feel after each food. It's going to help with your symptom sheet down the, at the end. Just through a couple of lifestyle things I've thrown in here as well. Detox bath, which is my favorite. Some tips there on your detox bath. Um, it should be done about two, three times a week. Um, cleaning products that go through the cleaning products and and what to talk about what do you want to have a look at that they don't have the ingredients that they don't have in them. Um, sleep, how that's important throughout this whole program because it promotes stress and we want to try and get the stress out of the body to balance out the hormones. Um, scrolling through next. Uh, here's tips for dining out and stuff. And that's what I talked about before about watch out for the refined seed oils. Cleaning out your pantry and fridge. I know it's hard to go and buy these things that are organic and all the, especially all the cleaning products and stuff like that. It was all the chemicals and stuff. I just I find it's a lot easier that if I just run out of something, I just don't replace it. I'll find a healthy alternative. So it doesn't mean you need to go and clean out your pantry if you have to. Um, just just don't replace it next time. Um, especially when we're talking about the food side of things, you might. You might say, okay, you live with a lot of people and, you know, you, I can't make them eat this food with me as well. Well, my question is, while you're detoxing, you know how food the bad, how bad the food is for you right now, then why are you going to make your loved ones have it too, something that's bad? So just think about that. If, if all comes really bad and it's driving everyone a bit crazy, just have your own section in your pantry that's on your food. Because, again, if it's not in your house, you won't eat it. But if you're staring at it, it's, it's going to be very hard not to eat those bad foods. Um, definitely plan. If you fail to plan, you plan to fail. Have a read through that section. That's very important. Prepare your lunches. Prepare your dinners if you can. There's a lot of cooking on weekends you need to do. Um, establish some go-to meals. This is very important as well. Sometimes I have breakfast, dinner, or dinner for breakfast. This is quick and easy. I haven't got time to cook. I can wake up in the morning. What was left over from dinner last night? I can eat that. Sometimes I get home at night and I can just quickly whip up some eggs for, for dinner and I just want to go to bed. So um, have a look through all those things as well. A game plan is important. Here's your support team. I'm your support team for one, and you've got everyone else doing this detox as well. So um, don't be afraid to ask any questions through email. I'll put it out to everyone, see how everyone's going. Um, we've definitely got a good support system with all of us doing this. Some tips on what to expect here, days one to seven. Everyone's different. Just want to start off by saying that. But um, here's such things on what to expect. And uh, read this first paragraph because it says the first seven days will be very hard. And I'm telling you that now. It's going to be hard, especially depends on how you're eating right now. But um, trust me, if you get through the first seven days, it's going to be all worth it. The first seven days are harder, but then after that, you're going to feel you're sleeping better. You've got more energy. You're much, you're much more in a better mood all the time. Your hormones are balanced out. So just get through that first seven days. And you hear, see here in days 8 to 14, it says when you start to feel like you have more energy and sleeping better at night. So read through all that. Um, scrolling down 15 to 21 19 to 20 read this it's important just because you made it 19 days you want to have a glass of wine doesn't mean you can there's only two days left you've defeated the whole purpose of what i'm trying to teach you here I'm trying to teach you how to eat well and not to grab those wines when you need to wine is always going to be there alcohol is always going to be the bad foods are always going to be there you can eat them whenever you want let's just do this for 21 days and let's just say no for 21 days i think it's um, questions and answers, little section you can read through here which will really help you, um, what, what's going to happen throughout this whole detox. You might find you don't have to ask me, they're all here. Um, let's go through. What to do after? Um, me personally, what I do after I detox, I just keep on going. I just drop it down to level one and I can just clean eat. Um, it's it's pretty easy. My suggestion for you, 21 days, it's good because it creates a habit. If you can push the 30, by all means do it. Um, if you're doing level 2 or 3, just drop down to level 1. Um, introduce some more foods into you and um, it's a lot easier than level 2. So just, I have people sometimes go 40 or 50 days and that's when you see those 15, 20 kilo losses. So I keep going if you can. Um, there's a lot of reintroduction processes here we're talking through after you detox. This is all very important. So read through that at the end, or you can read through it now. It tells you how to reintroduce the foods. We're going to do it every three days. Because sometimes you eat a food, things like bloatiness and um, digestive problems and not sleeping, moody, all sort of stuff. Sometimes you can see those symptoms 10 minutes afterwards, an hour afterwards, or even three days afterwards. So we're going to wait three days and see if anything has happened um, to the hormones or to how you feel with that food that you've introduced. And if nothing's happened, you feel like, okay, keep that in your diet, you've reintroduced it, we're going to reintroduce something else next. Um, let's move on. 
can read through all their introduction. I think we're almost done. So here's how to reintroduce for level one, level two. I was talking about all the grains, legumes, alcohol. How to introduce for level three. Um, this is all the resources I use to compile this manual. And see the spreadsheet. This is what I want you to do before we start. So do this before the first. Um, go through all this on your before section, all the way down. Give it a rating of zero to four, as zero being never, almost ever, and four to frequently have it. An effect is severe. Um, because we're going to go through this, we're going to fill it out at the end and see the difference. Um, and that will help you either decide whether you want to keep going or not, and see how good it was. Because you won't remember 21 days later if you had nausea, or vomiting, or constipation, or bloated feeling, and all sort of stuff. It's really good to tick these things that you have. Give it a score of zero to four, and just compare it at the end. It's a very, very um, exciting thing to do. And I think that's about it, guys. So um, this is just, yep, let's fill up the last sentence sheet. That's all I wanted to go through. I've covered the diet and what to do, level one, the difference between two and three. Don't forget the Dirty Dozen and the Clean 15. That's very important because organic all the way is going to be the best, but if you can't afford it, Dirty Dozen, Clean 15, Google those. Um, hope you learned a lot today. Send me an email if you've got any questions, and thanks for your time. Thanks a lot.